so we're uh, I guess we're dusting in this Lotus racing car because well because somebody's got to dust this stuff in hey so um, what is the kind of state of it here it's not bad actually it's really quite good some old repairs uh, Gel coat cracking here, and a bit of a repair there. Old repair above the wheel arch here. Suspension quite badly, quite badly damaged in here, and all the way, really right through to here. So there's a pretty substantial amount of uh, a broken gel coat. So that's got to be fixed. When you look at the, you know, the surfaces of the panels, they're, you know, they're pretty uh, wonky, you know, pretty wavy looking. So, might be something we would think about as this is supposed to look pretty presentable. Um, we might tidy that up a bit. See an old repair right through there. So yeah, we have to get rid of this very bright green and uh, the vinyl, and that's all got to go. And so it's time to take it apart. Yeah, we're going to take it apart, starting with the glass and mirrors and what all the clips and uh, fasteners. There's not a ton, eh? Oh, that's kind of actually nice though. Yeah, the whole lot. Colin Chapman was famous for just larding his cars up with tons of extra shit. So that's just kind of a nice surprise that it's not just a sticker. Yeah, it's not just a sticker. So we're going to fix it by uh, adding heaviness. <laughs> Al's been uh, shaping up the Lotus uh, body here. What do you think, Al? Oh, it's a beautiful shape, Sam. Yeah. Lovely. Really is actually. Lotus is beautiful. It's a it? nice big shapes to, to yeah, the sand. Yeah, there's like no secret, no real secret direction changes that go on. No yeah, thing. it's all very. It's like it's quite, you a, know. quite an, a, a, you know, a, a flowing design. Yeah, nice. And uh, yeah, a few simple shapes that, uh, yeah, but it has dry, to look nice, dryer right? Repairs, like all oh yeah, there's some excitement, cars, you know? yeah. There was some old, old timey things excitement. Things to peeve a guy off and just start putting the block on it. Yeah. A little, little peeve, little cheese. Okay, well, that's coming along. It's gonna be a lot. Hey, we got I some more. I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. This is not your kind of thing, really. No, I don't really like these cars. <laughs> British cars, not really your thing. No, not really. Yeah. Little bubble jumpers, they call them. Right. Well, not really into British cars at all. Yeah. So this is, we believe, a 1600cc. I don't know much about it. I've not seen it other than like this. So. Anyway, I like it like this. It's like uh, what 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 of the car is the here? I sat in it that one day when I still had a windshield. Yeah. It was yeah. awesome. Awesome car. Oh, I really hope yeah. we get to try driving this thing. I really, really want to try and drive yeah, this. Yeah, it'd be fucking crazy. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Okay, probably a little more fun than the Fraser. Just Maybe. gonna throw that out there. I don't know. Maybe. You ever right? really tried to chuck the Fraser around? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, watched Ash watched. Yeah, yeah. Watched I chucked her a little bit. Now, you Maybe have to have. Pretty fun, pretty responsive. Oh yeah, no, she's. Uh, you know what it was? It was. Uh, it was, uh, it was yeah. It was just like a feeling of. It was just like, that's enough. And yeah. you just have like a slow push Hours and you can balance it out. Yeah. yeah. So much that's setup. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's why the double pins on the front, <laughs> the singles on the back. That's years of research. And Al, the one armed blocking champion. Just, just, uh, just, you know, just broke my arm. Thought I'd come in and block your Lotus. He has the British car sickness. Well, I took the time off so I could see the surgeon on my face. It's already broke. Right, yeah, like, Stuff this like might be your last chance. You never know. Well, yeah, like, what if he says 12 weeks, don't do anything with that arm? Okay, yeah. well, then what the fuck? I didn't do anything. I like, this is it. You should have done the Lotus. 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 You should have
<laughs> really zoom in and get each bit. If not, I can bit and bit the bottle off. Kind of like trying to get a canoe straight, eh? Real, pretty much the same thing. Right? Only the bottom of the canoe goes in the lake and you don't see it. Unless you're just like a car show canoe kind of guy where it goes on your back of your truck to the car show. Uh -huh. But here, you're looking at the bottom. Right. It's the top. Does that make sense? I don't know. Sometimes uh, when I'm standing, sometimes I, I think. try to talk at the same time. Like the fucking words come out fragmented because all that really matters is standing. Yeah. It's like, you ah. get deep into the sanding zone. I don't think Colin Chapman would approve. Really? What? Colin Chapman probably wouldn't approve. It's debatable though. We're making him look better. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that was what he was about mostly. I mean, it's just a Formula 3, so. It's true. It's all about looks at that point, so they spend the big money later on. And then they get the wavy fucking lightweight. They <laughs> get the that's wavy one. one the wavy it's cars going fast, eh? Horrendous. This thing is tidying up, though. Man, I don't know what's showing up on the camera. Probably just a large field of yellow filler. Yeah, damn, right? Yeah. Jesus. Just getting the Lotus 51 ready for its second coat of primer here. Uh, it's all starting to look pretty decent. Got a little low spot here, probably because it the uh, fiberglass will shrink one or two percent. And that was a pretty big repair. So it doesn't really uh, bother me that that had to be touched up. Uh, other than that, really happy how uh, the wheel well has turned out. And just had to do a couple of, a couple of rivets uh, gave trouble and caused some damage on their way out. So fixing that and uh, just gonna blow it off and put a second coat of primer on. Here's the, uh, here's the blueprint, uh, John came over the other day and we uh, laid out roughly what we were after, so that should be fun. Uh, okay, meanwhile, just primer. Uh, let's have a look. This is where we're at. Oops, pardon the mess. Not really a big deal at this point. We are not clearing anything. All we're doing at this point is uh, just putting the uh, the details on the thing. So uh, the the trick today is to paint the top of the front of the car gold and uh, around the front here gold, and then we'll mask that off to be the the stripe uh, probably tomorrow or the day after. So I'm going to get started with that. I already wiped all this with cleaner yesterday. Just one quick tack before we start spraying. Make sure there's no garbage. So this is all just base coats going on. When all of the stripes are done and the whole car is painted, we'll unmask everything and then we'll clear up the whole car at one time.
Let's call that four or five coats. Uh, actually quite happy with that. That's going to look fine. So we're just going to let it get nice and dry and then we'll mask off the stripe as per as per the drawing here. So then we'll be on to the black around the cockpit and then we'll start getting ready to paint the whole car. Speaking of Plymouth, uh, uh, right away a few people mentioned that they wouldn't mind seeing uh, some stainless uh, dent removal. Uh, again, I'm not uh, claiming to be uh, any good at it. Just thought if some people maybe weren't familiar with the, the actual technique, it's by and large uh, very, it's actually really quite simple. So I think a lot of people think there's some magic to it, but in fact, I don't think that there is really. If anybody wants to see a very typical uh, dent repair on this, pick a pretty difficult one here. Uh, I think this is the front driver's uh, fender on the 60 Fury. And it would kind of spoil the side of the car. Um, and it's very typical of the kind of thing that happens. This is a little worse than some, so maybe it serves as a useful uh, exercise. And again, I'm not claiming that we're going to get this perfect, but I think we could get it so that you could at least put it on the car and not always be looking at it. So we can see uh, the dent is very close to that folded edge. Just to make everything a little easier, I'm going to unfold that lip a bit. So that's uh, not something we want to do a ton of, but I, I, I think in order to get at this, I'm going to have to unfold that enough that we can uh, get in behind it, and then we'll fold it back when we're done. I'm just going to uh, work my way along here with these pliers and, and open that up a bit. Yeah, there. Now we have much better access to that. So very, you know, make it gentle and, and uh, don't put any sharp kinks in it. Come on, you stupid thing. Anyway, whatever, that's what we're doing. So now I'm going to start pushing the dent out. And there's really not much science to that. Just kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm not really sure. We're going to start at the edge and I think I'm going to just give the worst of it a little tap first to take some of the stress out of it and then we'll uh, we'll be a little more careful after that. One mistake I used to make doing this was to try to kind of whoop, kind of just tap the dent out but you can see it's very hard to get the hammer to land in the right place each time. So instead of doing that I would now I will take the hammer and put it exactly where I want it and then hit it with something else like this broken hammer here. I can hit it a little harder because I'm not worried I'm going to miss and I uh, can do it with a lot more controlled manner with no, not leaving any mountains when I'm done. So the first couple of taps have taken a lot of it out of there. A little sharper chisel with a slightly radius end so we're not going to put any like uh, kind of mountain tops in it. Looking exactly where we want to be, which is where it tightens up there. Okay. I'm getting that we're getting that corner out a little bit. We're gonna keep going a little bit more. There's still this high spot in the top, it's flattened, the radius, this radius has gotten really tight here. So I gotta put something in there and, and flatten that out or we'll be left with that when we're all done. Using the rounded head of the hammer as a dolly, I kind of beat that radius back into the side of that molding. So it's getting a little flatter there now. And now we got that kink in it, and there's still that low spot there. So let's keep banging at that. 
Now we're going to switch. And we're going to gently push this out and then we're going to start figuring out how we're going to get that kink out of it there. And uh, then we'll start, then we really start with the little stuff and just kind of tap until we're happy and then we start seeing if we can file it. And then the file will tell us what's left. Getting there a little more yet. Sorry about the appalling filming. The dent is getting pretty small now, and I think we need a little more, and then we gotta put something in there and take that take that kink out of it there. So that's going to involve putting a dolly in there and that's going to happen any time now. I think I'd like to get the dent a little more out right next to the kink. I'm going to do a few more taps in there. Okay, at this point that kink in it is now the biggest problem. So I'm going to try to push that down and put that extra metal in the dent there to try right beside it. So we're going to be tapping down on that, pushing up here, just like a smaller version of any old fender repair. Nice thing about this is you can hide a little ripple or you can hide a, a little imperfection. It's just get rid of the huge dent. Okay. Looks like this little miniature dolly here will work. So I'm laying it right on there, trying to get the flat part of the dolly directly underneath that. And then I'm gonna just tap on that and hopefully we'll get some of that guy out. What is Franker's on about? back over this way and now we're really down to the, to the fine stuff here. Uh, to just a few sharp dents. Um, I'm going to keep concentrating on that right there because once that's out, the rest of it will uh, we'll have a better idea of what we got to do. I think this is too high now. That's going to have to come back down. Okay, I've got the dent to uh, where the basic shape is right, and what we're left with is a lot of really small high and low spots and some hammer marks and probably some bigger low spots that need more hammering. So at this point I just take a file very lightly just to mark it so you know what's going to come out and what isn't. Seems brutal and it is but you got to do it. Really going beyond there. Let's see. Okay. So no really terrible news there. Basically showing that everywhere those little spots are, that's good. It's nice out here, and we're still low there and there. So it was just going to need some more hammering. But uh, these areas here are not. So still low right in the middle of it. There. I'm going to start with that. All right, carrying on, banging up the low spots and uh, a second pass with the file. You see that the low spots are now smaller and kind of evenly distributed. We have a little bit of something here. 
but now it's just a matter of we just literally carrying on doing the same thing. You can see there's there's no there's no shavings or whatever on the table. There's nothing in the file. It's really just kind of scratching it and just showing us what to do. Uh, eventually, we're going to use the file to take some of the micro hammer marks out of it. But the stuff's only I don't know. It's not very thick. It's like twenty thou thick maybe. So we don't have a lot of room to goof off with it. I really try not to uh, use the file as anything other than a marking tool. But when we get it close we do have to file the whole thing to take the hammer marks out. So you want to just work your way up to it. That's all. Okay, here we are with the really the, the rough out done at this point for the purposes of what we're doing here. Already looks pretty good. You can see the back, there's no magic, just tiny little hammer and hammer marks and, and uh, sanding it occasionally to, <clears throat> to keep it easy to work with. Uh, just a, a little tiny punch with a rounded off end. And uh, yeah, so from this point, that requires really just sanding and polishing. We'll take this one right through to the finish. Uh, normally you would do the other ones and then polish all at once. There's one there and there's one more here and there's, uh, I don't really like this. This is bent a little bit in here too. So still a lot more work to do on this, but that was by far the worst of it see a little bit of damage here but that's related to this not to the one we're working on so one at a time but uh, okay now we're gonna sand it and uh, I think we'll start with 80 grit and we'll work right up to 1000 grit and then polish it and it'll look fine all right sanded it all the way up to uh, 2000 at this point and now just give it a little bit of a polish and see how it looks. Uh, so the sanding process is basically file. Uh, you can use a finer file if the one you started with is too coarse. This one's pretty fine. Um, so I went from the file to the 80 grit. Each time you do this, take whatever marks from the previous grit completely out because otherwise you'll be trying to take the file marks out with the 2000 grit. So hammer on the 80 until every file mark is gone. Never more than double, never more than double your grit. 80, 150, 180, 240, 400, 600, 800, 1000, and then finally 2000, which was kind of not really necessary. So that's the secret to the sanding is never more than double your grit and it's going to take a while. It's a lot of sanding but each time you get the previous grits marks out and it'll actually turn out nice. So often you see guys try to do this and they'll they'll start polishing it way before and they, and they end up with something that's shiny that has marks and shit all over and it looks terrible. So I'm going to buff this up and we'll just have a look at the one little spot that's done. There's still tents all around it but this one's done. When I'm doing this for real, I'll be doing all of these on a on one of those flapper wheels. But for the purposes of just proof of concept, um, this little paper towel and whatever, it's not perfect, but it's pretty decent. And um, I think we can say that that dent is basically gone. That is gone. So one here still has to be done. One there has to be done. But there's uh, there's all of our hammer marks. And there's where the dent was. It's uh, there's no way that anybody's gonna pick that pick that out on a, on the car when it's all finished. You really would struggle to see that it was ever there. So just careful and. Uh, I 
again, just like so much of this stuff that I used to think was impossible, there's, there is no magic. It's just time. Time and a little practice. I don't do a lot of this. It's not like I've spent tons of time learning how to do this. I just figured it out and started doing it. But that will allow you to fix all your stainless, and that was a pretty bad dent. Most of these, most of your dents are usually pretty minor. Like that guy there, like that looks easy now. Uh, and we've got the worst one out of the way, so really happy with that. A little bit more polishing, you'll never know that anything was done. That took me, hmm, I don't know, well over an hour to do that one dent though. So when you add it up across the whole car, it takes some time, definitely. It's it's pretty fun to be at the point where we're straightening out the moldings on the Fury from what we started with. To be worried about dings in the moldings is, is just fine with me. I've uh, let the gold base coat dry on the Lotus for a couple of days and now I'm going to start uh, laying out the stripe. So what I've done here is just run a center line down the car and that'll allow me to get the stripe uh, on center. So I'm going to do that now and then uh, we'll uh, do the uh, bit around the nose here and then we'll cut all the overlaps and then we'll paper it all in and we'll see how she goes. So the next thing is to put a stripe there or a piece of tape here and a piece of tape there all the way down. We'll bring them right down to the front and then we'll put another piece of tape that way and then we'll just radius the corners and then we'll paper it up. Let's see how that goes. Getting going for something like that. So that's the goal today. If we get that taped up then uh, the next thing I'll probably do the black around the carpet. This is the uh, rough outline of the Lotus uh, stripe here. So uh, as per the drawing we are uh, offsetting the stripe half an inch from the white circle and uh, just radius these corners here now we'll paper it all off and uh, trim all the overlaps uh, so that we are ready to get on with the rest of it actually kind of difficult to uh, to mask this vehicle off because the the original mold itself is hardly even symmetrical. Uh, there's so many just slight variances on this thing from side to side that that even uh, even getting it square to itself is impossible. So it's just a matter of uh, picking the best fit and going with that. And I think we'll get away with it. it looks pretty good. So let's paper it up and see one more time. Okay, well I've got the uh, gold stripe papered up here and just uh, masking off around the cockpit where that's all going to go in a matte black. Uh, yeah, so that will get covered up and then we will do the green and then unmask everything except the matte black and clear the rest of the body. be a pretty cool looking car I hope. So what is this? Uh, color number uh, what? Three. three? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Four, then clear. But it's still yellow as you go after the green, but it'll be on top and it's not my job. That'll be all the lettering. Lettering and head striping around all of the uh, around all the bowl. Oh yeah. We'll get Dave in. Right. Is that on top of the clear then, or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to clear over and straight things. I just think it's weird.
Yeah, I was gonna say that looks really neat. That's fucked. I like it. That's sweet. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah, it's appropriate for this. All right, well, I've got all of the masking uh, more or less wrapped up on this. So I'm going to just uh, go scuff everything again with 600 here, uh, just to get it ready to put the final color on. And uh, once that's dried, we'll unmask everything and then we'll clear it. So we're just going over the car. Um, 600 dry, paying attention to the edges, and very lightly just taking the nibs off. This is all base coat, it's all going to melt together, so I'm not really worried about the surface other than that it's clean. I can always delete this part if it turns out I was wrong. I'll just overdub it with never do this. Yeah. This ruined my car with the arrow, the thumbnail. Yeah. This is what we have instead of made up drama. <laughs> we have just mind numbing boringness. I guess I yeah. pretend I'm mad at Dean or something. Dean, oh. quit fucking around so much. It's a good time for a monologue or something over right. top of this, yeah. right? <laughs> So let's cut to a little montage. We could do a drunk Dean montage right here. <laughs> right, every time the action gets a little sketchy, we'll just cut to, to Dean. Guys, we're gonna get all this done. We still have another 40 years left in my life. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> you wanna put some money on that there? Maybe 30, hey? Oh God, I'll make 40. I'll make 80. I'm gonna make 80, yeah! Then we can cut back like nothing happened, right? This was, uh, this was pretty bad in here. Like, some, some repairs went on. So, just a very light 
once over with the 600. Just, just taking the taking the dusty dry spray off, whatever. I'm not going too crazy. I'm gonna get a fresh piece. Yeah, fresh sandpaper is always the best, eh? Where is the sandpaper? Right there. Same over here. Very, very light. I don't know how transparent this green is. It's not what's happening, so I don't, I don't think you could take more than four coats. It takes four or five coats, then it takes four or five coats. You don't want to seal it, you know, because then you can have a layer of gray on every edge. Oh, yeah. It's nice to just kind of do the colors on top of each other. I'm just going to tape out the circle here. anything through because it's white turn it to just wreck. Okay, and then I'll just seal up the bottom there and that's good enough. Hey Frank or Franks, is it time to paint the lotus? I say. Uh, first thing we gotta do is kind of get it up on this little soft little stand for its delicate self and that'll support it here and then we're going to wire it up at the back through these and that'll allow me to paint the bottom of it without any of this kind of nonsense so let's do it well we're getting uh, close to putting some paint on the lotus body here Let's have a looky. So not really much to report other than we've had to fab up kind of a stand and strings kind of thing to hold it up because I have to paint under there at the same time. So uh, yeah, now we'll be doing a dark green and then clearing it all. So this is mostly about just getting the final color on, unmasking everything and burying it all in a couple coats of clear. And then we'll uh, we'll decide how much further we're going to take it after that. And then when it's all finished, we're going to have Dave come in and stripe it. So uh, looking forward to that and uh, pretty happy with it so far. Just spent a day or so doing touch-ups and cleaning up and, you know, just getting it ready. So let's uh, start with a coat of green. Probably going to be three or four before it's covered. And uh, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. I have, to, uh, I have to paint with my glasses off now because I got new glasses and I'm not going to wreck them. So I just have to assume that it's not going to make much difference if I have glasses on or not.
Go there, Braggers. Okay, so 10 minutes between coats and just keep hammering her on there. We are two coats in on the on the Lotus 51. Uh, we'll do probably a couple more. It's still a little transparent, but we're starting to get the depth of color a little bit. Yeah, very likely two more. So far so good. Once we're done, we have the very uh, nerve-wracking job of unmasking all this, and uh, there'll probably be touch-ups, and then we have to clear it all. So this is gonna be a long uh, night. It's just such a cool, hey, eh? that's a, just such a cool looking car. Frankers is sticking it out with me. Hey? What a good girl. No. Hi. What's going on? Mini Frankers. I know it's boring. Okay, time to pull the rest of the tape off here. You'd think this part would be fun, but it's actually not because it's really just more nerve-wracking bullshit waiting for something to go wrong. So we've got all the rest of the coats of green on. Looks very nice. Started pulling some of the tape. Uh, yeah, so far so good. So I think I'm going to start with the... I don't know. Maybe I'll start with the third circle thing here. Well, that was close. Anyway, I think this is more of a two-hand job. But we'll do it. We'll try it. Two layers there. Okay, I gotta finish this with two hands. It's, I thought I'd fucked it up there, but we're safe.
Okay, let's keep going with the uh, with the gold nose here. This guy is easy. There's nothing. There we are with the graphic uh, unmasked, and now just to wet the floor again and put some clear on it. This guy looks ready to go. I didn't do any body work on this. It's right as it came out of the mold, so she's a little choppy. But it's a it's a fiberglass thing. That's how they are. So more or less looks good. I don't see any real problems. So. Let's see if we can get the clear on there without fucking it all up. That's the first coat of clear. We'll do one or two more. Uh, so far, so good. next day and uh, the the car looks good so that was a fun little paint project and uh, next we'll be getting uh, Dave out here to uh, outline the gold with a yellow pinstripe and then he's gonna letter the side of the car and then uh, then John can uh, take it home put it together and then uh, with any luck we'll be taking it for a drive next year I hope More snow today. Do you like snow, Frankers? <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> My God. Come on. Did you find a new stick? That's very nice. Careful. Frankers has a stick. He's very, very excited about it. Well, here's the building thus far. More or less going as planned, uh, except that I ran out of good weather. So it's kind of hard to see. So that's uh, about where we're at. Um, I'm going to start sheeting it as soon as I can and as soon as it's uh, the roof is sheeted and it's shingled then uh, I can pick at it after that but I'm running out of uh, decent weather here. Anyhow, not complaining. We did do very well to get as far as we did. And so so that's uh, that's very satisfying to see it that far because it was kind of a it's kind of a make it up as you go kind of job that it more or less went, you know, uh, can't go according to plan if there's no plan. I'll be just happy to get some roof on it. I still have to do the overhang thing at the front. I have to make some kind of a peak out there that's going to kind of come back this way and kind of a, you know, in the way that it would. Maybe we can get a picture of it from here. Oh, not at all. The light. No. There's how we how we got that one rigged up. Um, yeah, that seems to be plenty plenty strong for what this is really. 
snow shed. It's a regular ah, Same old shit. So here's a little snapshot of the situation at the Falls Nine Elderly Gentleman Lounge. Here it is. The car is almost ready to go. A few last bits and pieces. So we put the Caldwell Motors decal on the back. And it's just a little message for you guys. And the last moment for you to say, no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we no one our decals on here. Bullshit car. <laughs> if we're going to represent the Cold War Motors Racing Division, then here's the man to do it. <laughs> oh yes. You you won't be able just to show up and say that something is knocking and go home. <laughs>